Hello and welcome to another Cypher 2 tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to take a look at signal flow and audio routing within Cypher 2. I've chosen a sequencer preset here because it demonstrates some of the techniques that I'd like to talk about. So it's a fairly modest preset, it uses the sequencer obviously, we're not going to look at the sequencer in this tutorial, I'll be doing a very in-depth tutorial on that soon. So we'll start off by looking at the three oscillators, one, two and three here. You'll have noticed in the preset when I was playing it that there are two elements to the sound, there's the main synthesizer sequence and there's also a hi-hat line. If I mute oscillators two and three and we just listen to oscillator one, you'll hear the main synth. Now if I mute oscillator 1 and we just listen to oscillator 3, you'll hear the hi-hat line. One of the interesting things about this patch is that it actually makes use of Cypher 2's dual filters. So there's two completely independent multi-mode filters. Filter 1 is here and filter 2 is here and in the middle you'll see a shared control. This is a filter cutoff knob that is normally linked to both filter 1 and filter 2's frequency cutoff values. However, it's possible to unlink these. So these little arrows here represent whether or not each filter is linked to this shared filter cutoff knob. As you can see, filter 1 is linked and filter 2 isn't linked. Moving back to the oscillators, the important parameter is down here at the bottom. Oscillator mix. There's one for each oscillator. Using this parameter you can route the oscillator output to filter 1 or filter 2 or a mix in between. You'll notice that the visualizer in the center of the screen changes when I roll over certain parts of the interface. When I roll over this oscillator 1 mix control, we can see a little representation of how the signal flow is routed. Here's what happens if I change the output of oscillator 1 from filter 1 to filter 2. So we can see there that oscillator 1 is now going 100% to filter number 2. Now it's going 100% to filter number 1. Here's 50%. Looking at this you can also see that oscillator 3 is going to VCF2 currently. You'll notice also on this signal flow diagram the shapers. The shapers are found up here in front of each filter. There's a shaper 1 and shaper 2 and they're not used in this patch but they can be very useful for wave shaping the signal either before it goes into the filter or after it comes out of the filter. And this small icon here will switch the shaper from pre to post filter. So that's shaper 1 pre post and that's shaper 2 pre or post and you can see the signal flow diagram in the visualizer updating to represent that. So that's the oscillators and the two filters. Let's move to this output mixer section here. These three controls width, root and pan all affect how the filters are mixed in a stereo space. Firstly, we've got different routing options for the two filters. Currently, we have this 1 plus 2 selected. That means that the two filters are currently in parallel. They're acting completely independently and the signal output of both of the filters is combined afterwards. This top option is a serial mode, filter 1 going in to filter 2. We can see that represented on the signal flow diagram again in the center of the visualizer. We can also select filter 2 going into filter 1. There's our parallel mode and there's also a 1 minus 2 mode. 
which again is a parallel routing, but with the signal output of filter 2 inverted. The width parameter above controls the filter spread in the stereo signal. So at 0% both filters are panned dead center. At 100% filter 1 will be fully left and filter 2 will be fully right. At minus 100% that spread will be inverted. Again we can see the lines changing on the signal flow diagram to represent this. VCF1 is the purple line and VCF2 is the yellowish line. Let's hear that in action. Here is the two filters running at 0%. So you should be able to hear there that the hi-hat line was on the right hand side, that's filter 2's output, and the main synth line was on the left hand side, that's filter 1's output. The panning control at the bottom controls the master output pan. So at these settings, if I pan everything right, because the main synth line is panned fully left, we will not hear it. So fully right we're getting only the hi-hat signal. Fully left we're getting only the main synthesizer. The other controls in this output section are the filter 1 and filter 2 controls. Pre and post control the amount of filter output before and after the filter. So in this case filter 1 is going into the mixer section, 100% post filter and 0% pre filter. Let's just listen to what happens if we take down the post filter, we just get a hi hat line and increase the pre filter. So what you're hearing there is the unfiltered signal but obviously we want the sound of the filter. Same goes for filter 2, pre and post over here. So if I want to increase the volume of the hi-hat in this patch, I can just use this control here. Finally we have this AB control. This is the final thing to show you really and it concerns effects. If we go over to the effects page you'll see that we have six effect slots and they are grouped into two groups of three, FXA and FXB. Each one has a separate mix control. At 0% you'll just hear the dry signal, at 100% you'll just hear the wet signal of these three effects. And bear in mind that each effect has its own wet dry mix. Now by default the six effect slots are in series. So the signal comes in at the start of FXA and it goes through these three effect slots and then through these three effect slots. So you've got up to six insert effects that you can apply. But if we quickly look back here at the output mixer section, you'll see this mix one root control. This allows me to take the output of filter one, this mix of pre and post, and send it either to FXA or FXB or anywhere in between. Now obviously when all six effects are in series that means that anything sent to FXA will go through six effects and anything sent to FXB will only go through the last three. However this toggle here, parallel, changes the configuration slightly. We now have two separate lines of three insert effects. So let's say in this patch that I'd like to apply some phaser to the hi-hats. I can put a phaser in FX chain B and then go over to my synth page and route the output of filter 2 to effects B. Filter 2 remember is our hi-hat line. So the main synth line is going through the FXA chain and the hi-hat is going through the FXB chain. Again we should be able to see that on this signal flow diagram. You can see that VCF2 is being routed quite independently through the FXB chain and FXA and FXB 
are both being mixed in to the master volume control, which is this one right here. So if I route the hi-hat line again back to FXA, you can see there at the beginning of the signal flow diagram, VCF2 is now going to FXA. So that phaser that we inserted on FXB will not be heard at all now. <laughs> So you can see there how powerful and flexible the signal flow of Cypher 2 is. All these controls can be modulated in real time by Transmod, so the potential for experimentation here is huge. That's it for this video, join me soon for another Cypher 2 tutorial. Mm -hmm.